This episode of How to Kill an Hour is brought to you by Microsoft Surface, and Microsoft very kindly sent us over the new Surface Pro, and I've used it to make this podcast, this very podcast you are listening to right now. Are you serious? Hello, there's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Right now, you were killing some time with I, Marcus Bronzy. And me, Funk Butcher. Usually, Funk, we kick off the show talking about what activities, apps, stuff we've been killing time with, right? Yeah. Um, so the thing I've killed time with this week has been the Microsoft Surface Pro. So should we just kick it off from there? And I like, makes sense. Let's right? do it. I've whipped it out because you, you've not hey, seen this hey, yet, have pause, you? I whipped, it out in the sh- I whipped it out in the Jeez. studio and I was waving it all around. And I, it caught everyone's eye. God. But um, no. <laughs> Decent exposure. So I've had my hands on it for like just over a week. And I literally just thought, if I'm going to get my hands on something, let me just immerse myself in it so I can give the full like spectrum of how it works. Mm-hmm. So just to clarify, what's it called? The Microsoft Surface Pro. Okay. That's what it is. Because yeah. there's a few other Surfaces out there. This is the Surface Pro. There's like uh-huh. numbers, like one, two, three, four. This is the Surface Pro. Okay. So it's designed for people who are creative mobile professionals. Can I just raise my hand? I'm yeah. one of those. One Are of those. you creative? Yeah. Are you mobile? Yeah. Are you a pro? Yeah. Fesh? Yeah. Oh, now? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's who it's made for. I'm not an intermediate level. I'm not a beginner. A be- <laughs> You're not even that creative. What would you call someone who's not that creative? A, a dull, unmobile professional. If someone that doesn't move anywhere, isn't very creative and not professional. I was going to call him a loser. A loser. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's designed for us. So it's designed for people that are like on the go. Mm-hmm. So um, the Jedi Knights of the yeah, creative world. Yeah, I mean, it, it literally just came out on, on June the fifteenth, so it's not been out for that long. Mm-hmm. I'd call us that though. We're mm-hmm. on the go. Mm-hmm. We're killing time mm-hmm. in different places. We mm-hmm. like to maintain our professionalism. Mm-hmm. Managed to do a little excursion to Europe, which we'll be able to talk about in a few episodes yeah. time as well. But you know what? I feel uh, quite a few people fall into that remake due to the fast pace of life especially in London. I think yeah. a lot of us are on the go and having to do work in uh, multiple areas. Yeah. I think they need to just, like you said, whip it out. <laughs> <laughs> whip it out in a coffee shop, usually, is, yeah. is the usual place you'll see it. See, that's what I, I think the people that used to used to just sit in coffee shops and yeah. do their work, yeah. they never had a name before. No. People that worked on the go, on the train, yeah. on their commute, they didn't have a name before. No. We now have a name. Yeah. Creative mobile professional C- cmps <laughs> just a cmp baby what do you do for a living i'm a cmp you down with cmp yeah, yeah you know me there you go uh so so what <laughs> <laughs> what does it do it's got three modes it transforms from pc to tablet and also studio mode so pc mode is like looks like a laptop yeah, yeah? okay tablet mode is where you rip the keyboard off mm-hmm. and it stands by itself yeah. tablet and the third mode is studio mode where you it's got a hinge on the back of it, which you can use to, for example, when it's in tablet mode, prop it up. Mm-hmm. Or when it's in laptop mode, prop it up so the screen faces you. Mm-hmm. But the hinge bends all the way around to like a ridiculous angle. And you can almost have it flat. So it's kind of like... Like an easel. You can easy, yeah, yeah, like an easel. Like the perfect angle for you to kind of draw, write on, sketch on and be creative Get with. your Da Vinci on. <laughs> yeah, get my Da Vinci on. And um, they've got all of the sort of good bits inside that you get in sort of high spec laptops. So this has got like the i7 Intel processor, which is what I use on my regular laptop anyway. Jeez. Um, I've got the power. <laughs> I've got the power. <laughs> so that's kind of all like this is this is all this all the spiel that you get of it. You know, create, study, work and play virtually anywhere. High resolution touchscreen. Oh, it's touchscreen as well, by the way. Yes. And uh, up to 13.5 hours of battery life in optimum conditions. So that's all the spiel about it, right? Mm-hmm. So it, sound, it sounds cool. I bet yeah. it sounds cool to you yeah. listening. Yeah. But like Funk said, we've actually got one here in the studio with us because uh, mm. today's show has been, it's going to be edited on it. And just talk us through what, what, what you think of the look of it, Funk. Or can you explain what you're seeing right now in front of you on the table? It looks brand spanking fresh. I mean... The chrome design in the back, it's got a very um, neat, very, do you know what it is as well? It's very thin. It's very unassuming. 8.5 millimetres thick. You want to tell that to your lady uh, when, you, when you take her home from uh, a night. That's, that's, that's no stats that you would uh, <laughs> want to give to the lady at the end of a Tinder date, but it's very impressive in the computer world. In the laptop world, you want to be bragging about 8.5 millimetres. <laughs> yeah. 
so yes, that it weighs about 800 grams as well, which is um, it's light. But as I was just about to say, it looks very unassuming. It doesn't look like it's got that much power. It looks like a very, um, if anything, basic bit of kit. When you just read to me the specs, I wasn't assuming that it can go toe to toe with some of the best laptops out there in the game. So yeah, you were you surprised when you heard the spec of specifications? Yeah, the spef- the specifications. 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 Yeah, um, I was very very um. Shall surprised. I hit, shall I hit you with some more for the nerds? Yeah, go on. Shall I hit you with some more for the nerds. Thirteen point five hours battery life. Already said that. Yeah. Intel Core i seven. Already said that. Mm-hmm. Sixteen gigabytes RAM, which is basically sixteen gigabytes RAM is good for if you're editing high HD. Uh, video or big vi- uh, audio product yeah. projects. Yeah, that's what it's good for. Um, if you don't need that level of juice, you can spec it down and get a less dear price. Mm-hmm. Check this though, Funk. It's fanless. It's not got a conventional uh, fan system, so it's got this kind of cooling system, which you would have seen in tablets before, because you know tablets don't work. Yeah, when you're working with them, and it's so it's, it's got this cooling system that doesn't like go when you're doing loads of work. Uh, touch screen weighs less than a kilogram. It's got a USB port. <clears throat> oh no <clears throat> really mm. yeah I'm sold mm. look at that I'm on sold. the right yeah I'm yeah. sold Mr. Cook I'm sold <laughs> uh, a micro SD card port hallelujah which means you can you know transfer data from uh, any device that takes micro SD card port or if you're someone that uses cameras and stuff like that you yeah. can there's ways for you to basically get data off without having to plug your camera in And you see and this is very interesting because what is this product called Surface Pro and who is it made for? Creative. Mobile mobile professionals. Yeah. And what they've done is, is put exactly what these people need. Exactly. 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 Whereas we actually have another, um, what's it called? Laptop on the market, which is yeah. supposed to be yeah. dedicated to that same um, section of the computing world. And they've left out those they things. disrespected us. That's very interesting. I felt very disrespected. So it's good for Microsoft to come along and just say like, listen, this is what you need. This is what you can get. It's got the mini display port as yeah. well. So you can yeah. plug it into yeah. a bigger screen. Yeah. So you know, like, all right, I'm editing video now. I don't just want to look at a smaller screen or look at a big screen. You know what I felt Microsoft were like? Microsoft were like that guy that came along to you at the <laughs> train station when you're crying and they put their jacket around. You said, hey, hey, baby, <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to you. Tell me, tell me what you need. You want you want USB? I got that. Yeah. So um, so it's got man. So yeah, it's tidy, tidy. Uh, well done, Microsoft. You know. Yeah. I mean, and even the finish as well. So like, I've just ripped off the um, finish I've just ripped him. off the keyboards because it's a, it's one that you connect to it, and it's made out of this stuff called Alacantra. Feels like felt. Feel feel, feel the Alacantra first. Yeah. Feel, tell me that feels like, please. Alicantra. Alicantra. It sounds like a a, 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 a British, uh, Spanish, um, a Spanish holiday resort that the Brits go to. I didn't know what Alicantra was. Do, do you know what Alicantra is? I've googled it. Did you know what Alicantra was? It's the next to Lanzarote. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's composed of sixty eight percent polyester and thirty two percent polyurethane. So that's why it feels fabricy. Mm, it's got increased durability and stain resistance. Similar to suede, might be identified as suede, but it's basically much more durable. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, if you want to, if you, you know, I'm not saying drop a coffee on your keyboard, but if you did, literally, the best way of describing it to someone who hasn't yet felt it is that it does feel like suede. It, it looks, it's actually blue, like blue suede shoes. They should make shoes out of that. Yeah, I wouldn't mind shoes in that color. Yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah, it's got the keyboard. Um, let me just snap it on. Listen, it makes such a cool noise. Listen. listen. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's got a little stand at the back of the screen as well. Yeah, which is great. Like, and then so basically, I don't remember the actual degrees that it, that you can bend the stand back to, but you can put it in this surface mode, which allows you to yeah draw on it like an e- like an easel, like mm-hmm. you said. Um, so it gives you loads of sort of I don't know, it just gives you flexibility. Um, this keyboard doubles up as a screen protector as well. Looks kind of businessy, doesn't it? Yeah. And on the charger for it, which I haven't got in today because the battery life is actually all right. Mm-hmm. The charger's got a USB port on it just so you can charge up. What? You know, just those little touches. Oh. Hey, man. Hey, man. I got a USB port. As on well? My charger. As well? Come with me. Come with me if you don't want <laughs> <laughs> If you don't want your manager standing in, in the background of your music video rubbing their hands. Come with me. 
ambassador with all these plugins who are really spoiling us. It's yeah. like a Ferrero Rocher it advert. Is, it is a Ferrero Rocher advert. So, Ex- excellente. And I'm telling you, yeah. hand on heart, as an Apple boy for over 10 years, which is a very long time, yeah. I'm looking at this with uh, loving, longing eyes. I actually want one. You want one? I actually want one. Hey, if you're listening, <laughs> could do with another one. A nice i7 spec. Another one. Another one. Um, oh, yeah, you can get like the terabyte hard drive and that in this little baby as well. Yeah. So it's got the storage space as well, which I always recommend. Like if you are, are serious about this creative mobile professional, people say, oh, don't have a big hard drive. I say, listen, get a big hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> eh, you don't need one. Get the hard drive. Because then when someone goes, hey, I've got 100 gigs of footage that I just need to give you and you're going to transport it somewhere <laughs> and you haven't got a memory stick, guess what? You're sorted. Remember the other day when Billy had that footage? <laughs> yeah. And Billy was like, we had so we went we did some filming in Brussels uh, and and Billy was like uh, Marcus I've got some footage from today uh, but I don't think your memory stick can take it I was like Ooh, firing shots I said please please Billy take this 256 gigabyte memory stick yeah and then let me put this this data onto my one terabyte hard drive all right but um that's how they throw shade in the, yeah. in the creative mobile professional yeah. world how big's your hard drive is it fan list though. <laughs> Uh, so yeah setting out was kind of easy um, Cortana you know like you mm-hmm. know that's their smart assistant yeah. kind of talks you through it so from the start it's like would you like to do this and you're like yes no that's kind of cool mm-hmm. yeah not necessary yeah. Uh, it yeah. uses this thing called Windows Hello as well where yeah. um, how it works is when you open up the laptop mm. or, or in laptop mode when you turn on the, mm. the tablet or whatever mode it's in it's got a little um, camera on it yeah. and it does a bit of facial recognition so you know like on smartphones you use your thumbprint yeah, so this uses yeah. facial recognition and wow. goes oh this is you unlock so you can literally press it unlock it open it um, and it's really it's just it's very interesting and it, it, you know it, it's just you know Windows runs nicely on it Windows 10 and it comes with a couple of extra bits as well I'm not done yet we've got yeah, more Yeah. so it's got like a, a stylus what this is is a no they call it yeah it's a stylus but it's a bit more than that they call okay. it the pen the pen yeah uh, because uh, you can draw with draw, draw with it like a pen. So you know like when you hold a pen directly down on paper, it's sharp. Mm-hmm. And then when you put it on its side, it shades. You can do that. Uh, so so it, it's actively reflecting the different pressure points that yeah. you would use. A, so if you are like um, a more of an artistic creative, mm. you don't need to, or clearly you don't need to buy an additional stylus. This no. one comes with a stylus. Yeah. And you can... I think you might have to buy it on the side. Okay. But yeah, but you can get one though. Mm-hmm. and yes yeah, like you said pressure 4,000 levels of pressure on the pen that it can work out so there's like quite you know a heavy handed bit and incredible and, and less and there's got this Microsoft Ink workspace where you can adjust uh, its settings and get art in a sketchpad app as well yeah um, let me show you something that I knocked together on the sketchpad earlier that was me being a bit arty uh, do you know what yeah that's not <laughs> I was expecting some stick men that's not bad that is not too shabby. You didn't do that. No, it's the one that came with <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. That's the card. you know. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, gosh. Uh, there's a very good example of computer some windmills. Uh, my version is, is I'm not the best drawer, all right? So, you know, if you want stick men, I've got, they've got the roundest heads. <laughs> Yeah, and they got the straightest fingers, my stick man. <laughs> um, I kind of use it just to take notes, really. Yeah. And you can use it for that as well. So, like, they've got this program called OneNote. Mm-hmm. Kind of like your one-stop shop for all your ideas. So, you mm-hmm. can be out and about, take a picture of something that inspires you, draw a circle around it, write some notes, mm-hmm. and it just keeps it all in one place. You can access it anywhere. Mm-hmm. So, that's kind of one use for the phone, re- uh, for the for the phone, for the pen, like, using it to take down your notes. And then also, you could be creative and, and draw stuff and or annotate. I'd probably be more on the annotate side of things because, yeah, um, yeah. as you've just said, my drawing's a little bit poo. <laughs> uh, and it also comes with this dial as well. Yeah, what's the, well, that looks interesting. So, oh, by the way, the pen, you can use it as a mouse as well. Like, you can pick stuff up, like, and move it around. So you can mm. use it. You know, I'm I'm an Adobe Suite kind of guy. Yeah. A Creative Suite kind of guy. So, yeah, I used it with Adobe Creative Suite. And I also use this dial as well. Now, the dial, it, I call it a knob in front of all the people from Microsoft and they didn't like that. <laughs> So we're not going to call it that anymore. <laughs> but the dial is like a little Bluetooth it's dial. A, it's a dial, Marcus. It's, it's, a, it's a dial. What a knob. Hey. <laughs> so yeah, it also comes with this thing called a Microsoft dial, which yeah. you pair via Bluetooth. It runs on AAA batteries that come with it. 
and you can either use it off the screen, like put it on the side next to you. It's like a dial which you turn left, yeah. right, or you can click once or hold a click and it gives you haptic feedback. Yeah. Or you can pop it onto the screen and it'll actually, depending on the program you're using, it will actually work on no the screen way. and pick up where it is. Oh, that is amazing. So if you hold down, for example, you can see the menu goes, is around it as well. Now, so it's like, it's a cylindrical dial, it's probably about two inches in height. Yeah. Um, and what's his yeah, girth? It's, it's girth, I'd say it's about, what's that, four inches across? I don't know, it's not, I'd, no, I'd call it an inch, I'd call it an inch tall and two, and two wide. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, or well, centimetres, it's about four centimetres. Yeah, four centimetres, so. And a couple across. of centimetres, yeah, there you go, you got your centimetres and inches yeah. mixed up. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> oh, that's what I was telling yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So yeah, um, it it comes. So basically, you can use it on off the screen, and it's one of those things where you look at it and you think that's really. Mm-hmm. Now when I looked at, it, I was like, the pen, yeah, the yeah. dial. I was like, ah. yeah. I wasn't too sure, but what I did was is you can actually go into the settings. This is why I'm glad I got a little bit of time with it. Because if you spend a day with products like this, you don't really get into them. Yeah. I went into the settings and I found that you can make, you can change what gestures on the pen. Like if you click the pen, because you can click the pen. Mm. You can actually use the end as a rubber as mm. well. Click the pen, you can change what it does. But with the dial, you can give it different settings. So for example, in Premiere, I went into the settings and 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 added Premiere the app in the settings for the dial. Mm. So it said, right, what do you want to do in Premiere? And I gave it a set of gestures, which meant when I scrolled right, it went forward a frame and when I went left, it went back a frame. Now that's really important for when I do, when you're doing video editing or mm-hmm. when you're doing audio mm-hmm. editing, going mm-hmm. forward a, a millisecond or a second and back mm-hmm. a, a second, a, a millisecond. And because it helps your workflow. It just helps your workflow. Yeah. Because yeah, you can use a keyboard shortcut to go forward a few frames or back a few frames. But what if you can just roll forward or roll back? Yeah. And I also set it the, the touch so that when I touched the, when I, when I tapped on the <coughs> dial, it zoomed in on a specific area that I had highlighted and I know it sounds really silly for people who aren't um, creative mobile professionals out there, but things like that, mm. cutting down that little half a second, second of telling actually you. going to the telling laptop you. and typing in the command or yeah. dragging the mouse across, having something which is kind of like a manual, yeah. a manual motion, yeah. it, it, it does save time collectively. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And like you can, and with the dial, you can <clears> do it, get to do loads of things. So volume, like right now I've got volumes, I can scroll so you can just read something. Yeah. Like I can, you know, I can just be reading something. Like you could be reading the paper online. You can just scroll. It's just, it's, it's just a nice tool, and mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I think having having a dial and the pen could really change the workflow. That's a very when nice touch yeah. when you're working in because funk you work with production programs as well, like high end digital audio workstations. Workflow's good, but also I think you know maybe getting your Microsoft Word little undo, mm-hmm. going back a little mm-hmm. bit, mm-hmm. Just browsing web pages. It's nice. It's nice. Um, so I really, really like that. And, um, what else, you know, it, it so the, the Microsoft Surface Pro, Surface Pro has kind of promised itself as a powerful portable product. I feel like that's what, that's what they're saying to yeah. us. Do you think it, it wins on that front? I think it wins hands down. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> because they've created something and clearly they seem to have listened to all the gripes yeah. of... Um, creative media professionals across all all spectrums, yeah. music, yeah. Um, creative design, all of them, all the platforms, and there seems to be something for everyone. When you're looking at the stylus, when you're looking at the yeah. the, the dial, not the knob, yeah, and you can see that they've tried on every single level to improve the workflow yeah. of those types of people. Yeah, and we've just spoken about the laptop use of it, so. When I pull off the keyboard mm-hmm. and because oh, you know you can download apps from the Windows App Store. Yeah. So Windows, the Windows Store, you open it up and you can download, for example, a Netflix app. And when you pull off the keyboard and open Netflix, it acts as if it's a a, a pad, like a like a um, a tablet. Mm. So it's like it it does the jo- usually you need two products to kind of get that experience, mm-hmm. like you know a tablet and a, and a laptop, but it's kind of just moved seamlessly between those two. Yeah, yeah. And it's, I just, I'm impressed, man. I'm pre- so it's good for being creative, but it's also good for a bit of R and R I feel as well. <laughs> like, you know, you can relax with it. And that means, that means that if we're going on a trip, I don't have to pack a yeah. tablet and a, and a laptop, pack this and yeah. it does everything that it needs to do. Yeah. 
But yeah, um, I think this is a very interesting mark of intent for Microsoft. We've always been, in my uh, opinion, a software based company. I yeah. think this this is something which makes them kind of puff up their chest and say, look, yeah, we can do hardware like the, the other the other cats in the game yeah. to a higher standard as well. Yeah. And um, for me, when I look at it, I can see this being used not only by creative mobile professionals, also um, children on the, the upper end of the, the age spectrum, maybe mm. like towards their teens, yeah. um, people at university and so forth. So as a uni device, hell yes. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, and let's not discredit kid, like young people. And now they are creative, yeah. and they're mobile, and they're, and they're professionals ever at a young yeah, age. You exactly. know what I mean, like, I just didn't want to give the whole a professional um, term. I didn't want to kind of like put it into a bracket of people that were on the upper end, yeah. earning a certain bracket of money, or yeah. in a certain job spectrum. Professional in the sense of you take your game seriously. Yeah, yeah, like us exactly. Yeah, you know I me. Mean? We take our, we spit our game. You get me? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's how I've been killing some time. How have you been killing some time recently? Well, I've been um, venturing to the to the big screen, the cinema, over the past couple of weeks. Yeah. <clears throat> Went to see two films. But aside from that, also, I want to talk about something new which came out on Netflix that I also saw as well. Yeah, go on. Um, the first two films that I saw were War for the Planet of the Apes which I believe is the third film of the most recent remake of the trilogy. It's obviously, I know there's loads of the Planet of the Apes franchise, within that Planet of the Apes franchise, obviously with the, the classic star and Charlton Heston. This film concludes the story of um, Caesar, kind of thing. I don't want to give too much away, but it kind of, you're, you're going from, I think it's the rise of the Planet of the Apes yeah. to, what was the one just before that? And uh, uh, more of the planet of the apes. <laughs> I think something like battle. It's a more, yeah. And it's then more of the planet of the apes. And then there's war. Yeah. What was the last one? Okay. Sorry, I'm really bad because they're not, they're not, they're not my favorite. Really? You should give them a shot. I've given the first two a shot. Which ones? The, the old classic ones? No, no, no. I've, I've watched the old classic ones on TV. Yeah. And the movies, uh-huh. and then you find out what happens at the end. Yeah. And then I watched the one with Mark Wahlberg. Because that was a reboot that they've been that, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, that's the one where, with um, Helena Bonham Carter and she yeah. was like Michael Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> were you the only one? I thought I was the only one. I saw that's her and she was like, <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like that one. So anyway, <laughs> War of the Planet of <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> War of the Planet of yeah. Sorry, it was Rise, Dawn, and this is War. Okay, okay Rise, cool. Dawn, yeah, and War. Okay. What did I say? Battle. <laughs> so you've got War of the Planet of the Apes, which kind of concludes the story of the, the main... Um, uh, uh, what do they call it? Ma- uh, not mars- marsupials. What are they? Uh, the the the, the what's, what's, what's well, the, they're gorillas? No, they're, they're what's, a combination what's, of the apes. Yeah. What what's the term for them? Apes. No, there's there's another term for them. What for apes? Yeah. Collectively, what they're known as apes. No, there's another term. Marsupial. That's a that's kangaroo. Yeah, it's not marsupials. Apes. Collective term. I'm not googling. I promise. Okay. Really? What's a collective term for apes? Homo something? No, that's us. <laughs> Homo sapiens. You thought that was a blunder there? Yeah, it was all. No. Um, I don't know. Uh, apes. I don't know. I don't know what they're called. It's going to come back to me later on. But I'll tell you what, a group of them is called a troop though. I didn't know that. Really? No, that. A, a troop. troop of apes. Yeah. Interesting. So it concludes the story of the main protagonist, <laughs> Caesar, yeah. which a lot of people have kind of um, grown yeah. fond of because of He's, um, I guess he has a lot of human qualities that they've put into um, his character, i.e. the the human quality of revolting. Yeah. That's something that we've done over history, years and years of centuries and centuries. Humans always get to a stage where they're fed up of the government, of the, the status quo, of the institutions, and they rise up in the dawn so that there's a war. <laughs> 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 that's the best way I try to link the, 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 the three films together but um, let's get on to the film the film um, aesthetically is amazing yeah again they're pushing the boundaries of the the whole CGI and the kind of blue screen green screen green yeah screen. Uh, they use blue and green yeah. and, and uh, they use motion tracking yeah because I actually went to the studio they do that you know really yeah, Imaginarium, yeah, West London actually got to play with that it, stuff. It's it's incredible. So, to think so. that back in the day 
we were watching films with um, stop motion when you had the old Sinbad films and that was the level of and, and uh, was it was the other one uh, King Kong yeah and uh, Godzilla <laughs> So you had, you Wait, had, it, looked, it looked like your plaster scene was fighting exactly yeah. so you had King Kong Godzilla Clash of the Titans all those kind of classic titles where they where they used to that was the cutting edge tech cutting edge technology and this is where we're at now mm. it looks seamless where you you saw the apes riding horses it was mm. just like that's, that's just so strange like you wouldn't even see, imagine that at a circus kind of thing yeah. but to, to see it on screen um um so you obviously you, you kind of get drawn into that aesthetically how amazing it is which leaves you not all the time but you you're you're kind of forgiving of the actual storyline itself you're not demanding as much from the story because you're you're so kind of um captivated by the way it looks the storyline has so much potential i'd say for me it kind of it's a bit tepid on the, the 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 final really the final third yeah and I bumped into Ace shout out to Ace who was yeah, also there at the yeah, premiere yeah and uh, he bumped into the the men's area pause <laughs> as you do yeah there was a massive queue outside the, the men's it's, it's quite a long film Take how it. long how long is it, long it felt like it was it was knocking on the three hour mark oh man yeah, it felt like that oh man um, oh man sorry <laughs> <laughs> wow but, I just felt with the the kind of the main baddie in there, which is played by Woody Harrison, mm. they could have really pushed a kind of extra, really demonic edge on him, but they didn't. I don't know if that's uh, on the, a case of the the script or whether um, it was bad casting. Maybe they could have got someone who could have played someone a little bit more evil. Um, and that could have maybe pushed the final fur to a big crescendo. He's a great actor, though. He is a great actor. But maybe in that case, then, uh, in his defence, it would have been the script where it didn't allow him to develop the the kind of wickedness you would expect from someone who was going around killing members of his own team, killing these apes for no reason. So Wow, really telling the whole story there. <laughs> really, um... <laughs> Really saving bits of the plot. <laughs> You've seen Planet of the Apes. You know yeah. what happens anyway. You know that you know they're probably going to survive at the end of it. But there is a lot of unexpected parts of the okay. film, so I haven't actually kind of um, sport it for everyone. And if you if you notice, if you look at the poster for the film, the picture has when you look at it from afar, it looks like there are a group of of apes, which is their collective term. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why you thought it was something. I don't know. Maybe there is something. I'm, I'm, I'm stupid. But um, mm-hmm. probably is. It looks like there's a bunch of humans facing a bunch of apes. But when you look carefully, there's a bunch of apes facing a bunch of humans and apes. Mm-hmm. Am, I, am I right? Is that something? Yeah. Should I read into that? Um, yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> I, like at the end of the day, if I spoke about that, that wouldn't be spoiling it either. But that, there's, a, there's a strong it's a strong kind of message or that is kind of been reflected throughout history, which is kind of substituted mm. within this film using apes. Okay. So you feel like you're watching a film, a fictional tale, which feels very, very familiar. Right. Okay. Which kind of made people within the audience feel quite uneasy. Right. Mm. So I did have a glance around and, that's, and I saw that, yeah, there's, there's a kind of a strong, um, I think you pronounce it, allegory mm. that's running through this film that seemed a little bit like deja vu. Right. Yeah. Which is very clever, which is, it seems to be the way nowadays that you get the message across, you change the subjects in the film and like Zootopia, for one, mm-hmm. that was another film where they kind of touched on the whole segregation and, and yeah. whatnot is currently going on and they c- put cartoon animals in there and okay yeah so with this you do kind of get that that feeling but like history history has a sense of being very wicked in its outcomes and i really felt like the film was gonna mirror that but i guess they had to kind of balance the the audience 
right and the and the, and the, the kind of the, the box office they didn't really want to have it is this what let it down for you then um yeah because i felt like it had the potential to be a great do you know what it is when you look at films like deadpool and ryan reynolds mm. um who we're going to talk about soon he's in the, the next film that we saw he wouldn't do deadpool unless it was in its r rated form same with yeah. logan logan was yeah. so um such a great film, logan yeah. Uh, the last Wolverine film, there was, I think explicitly, Hugh Jackman said to the studios that it had to be R-rated because that was the true representation of how the comic book character was. Yeah. So, The Planet of the Apes, is is which is in comic book form as well, they depict those apes doing some real, real deep stuff. Okay. And, Obviously, because it's such a blockbuster, because it's a summer blockbuster hit, it has a an obligation to catch the widest demographic of the the cinema viewing right. public. So I feel like it made some compromises on that part of the storyline. Okay, so then out out of five, like taking that 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 sort of unfulfilled area of 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 greatness that they could have filled in for you, yeah. What what does that get, do to your final out of five score for that film? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna um because we do out of fives for films quite a lot, yeah. Not for anything else because I just feel like it works better, yeah, there, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna measure it in the same way that I measured Batman versus Superman, which you didn't like, which I felt like he done very well considering the compromise he had to make in putting this universe together in a short in a short space of time, but having the pressure of still having to get bums on seats mm. in the cinemas, which is what Planet of the Apes, War of the Planet of the Apes had to do. So I could see that you can actually, you can actually spot the shift whereby the point in the film where it's just like, okay, let's make it commercial now. Ah. There, there, there was actually, there's actually a point where you're, you're watching the film and it's like, this is good. This is really good. This is dark. Okay. Now nah, this is, this is the popcorn and, this is the popcorn right, part. Right. So in 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 me noticing that, I'd give it a four and a half out of five. Okay. Still quite generous. I yeah, thought I thought yeah. you might hear it a bit harder than yeah. that, but no. Okay, cool. All right. So uh, you said you also saw Hitman's Bodyguard. Yes. So fuck, I was so jealous. I was jealous of Planet of the Apes. <laughs> couldn't get to that. Yeah. And at Hitman's Bodyguard, I was very jealous of that because yeah. you had an interesting experience yeah. when you went down there, yeah. didn't you? So the Hitman's Bodyguard was um saw that not last week the week before went down to uh west end of london nice plush hotel in soho it's quite a very trendy uh used to have quite a seedy history back in the day Soho. <laughs> okay <laughs> and um not that i would know that <laughs> disclaimer <laughs> and um we was um treated to a private screening but there was some special guests there in the private screening alongside the hitman's bodyguard bodyguard screening set up by lionsgate shouts to lionsgate mm. um we were joined by the stars of the film salma hayek All right looks amazing she, is she is she is she, <laughs> she, is she actually, in good in real life she, as, does, as she does look in. amazing in real life mm -hmm. and um the legend that is samuel L. jackson nah man come on man so after i picked my jaw up off the floor because this guy literally is a walk-in um interpretation of all these characters rolling yeah. into one he's he's he is no different he is just cool if you if he fell down and hit his head on the floor coolness would just pour out <laughs> <laughs> seriously the guy is just like m made in swag <sighs> He's he's dripping in swag juice. Dripping in swagoo. Dripping in swagoo. <laughs> Do you know what's funny? <laughs> I got go your Instagram. Can we play the video of when some when the guy asks him because they've got like the MC there yeah. and they ask him to talk about the film? Should yeah. we just play? What yeah, go on. So uh, Sam and Sama, can you for the people who haven't seen this film yet, can you give them some clue about the mayhem that's going to unfold? What can they expect from the Hitman's bodyguard? What the fuck are they here for? <laughs> <laughs> You don't want me to tell you what the movie's about. You want to see it, right? Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. <laughs> no no. No. The way he shut down. Listen, I can't express how unreal it is to meet someone and they actually meet your expectations. Yeah. And as many a time have you been let down? Oh yeah. 
many Definitely. a time. I've many been many a time. And just so you know, if you ever meet me in funk, your expectations will go through the roof. Go through the be like, roof. Wow. Woo. Wow. Yeah. We will smash your expectations. <laughs> But this guy feels like if you ask him too many questions, he might smash you. <laughs> he has his energy about him where he exudes all the characters, whether it's the guy trying to hold up McDowell's and coming to America, oh, yes. whether it's the, the hitman from Pulp Fiction, whether it's the, <laughs> the, like all of them rolled into one. He has a sense of you want to, stand over him but you don't want to get that motherfucker yeah yeah yeah. you don't want to get that so literally um he comes and everyone's kind of kind of in awe but what was a massive distraction the guy was sitting two rows behind me watching the film so he sat down and he watched the whole film with us yeah two rows behind and i i actually had this vibe of if I don't laugh at his jokes, I'm gonna get a boot in the back of my (laughs) (laughs) motherfucker why are you laughing (sighs) yeah but um the film itself um, basically is about um, a hitman who has its he he has um, uh, I don't know if this is true or not maybe that the hitman's out there if you're listening to How to Kill an Hour you can uh, verify this for us they have different classifications so he has a triple A grading which allows him to look after certain high profile clients okay I guess like heads of states and higher than celebrities and all that kind of stuff like real real high profile and um, uh, unfortunately he loses this he loses this this status. I won't say how. And what happens uh, from that point onwards is that his um, his life um, line, life lifeline, life expectancy, not not life expectancy. His life basically, yeah. it m- crosses the path of Samuel Jackson's, who is uh, a well well well-known well-hunted hitman who is on the way to the hague for his um involvement in war crimes of a certain nature um he's been transported there and his convoy is attacked and basically the girlfriend of ryan reynolds um asks for his help to look after him so that's how he becomes the hitman's bodyguard right. so that's how their relationship kind of develops from that point onwards you've got both of them are very, 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 very competent killers. So it's actually a case of Samuel Jackson doesn't need looking after and you have the kind of the whole dyna- dynamic through the film of mm. the, the banter of um, uh, Samuel Jackson kind of constantly poking fun at Ryan yeah. Reynolds for even um, doing the job that he's doing mm. and, and and losing his triple A status. And aside from the action which I felt would be a little bit on the silly side it wasn't the stunts are it's probably got one of the the best chase scenes I've seen in it for a long time there's one chase scene in Amsterdam it's up there for me in the top five in terms of the kind of the the choreography Um, both both Samuel L. Jackson though mm -hmm. and Ryan Reynolds yeah they're both Marvel they're, yeah, yeah, both Marvel, but they're both scene stealers mm-hmm. in their own right. Yeah, would you say like they they own scenes? So who, yeah. how did that dynamic work with such big big personalities? I think it was interesting to see because when they're not in the same shot, obviously, yeah, they they kind of absorb all the energy, mm. the focus, and together they obviously they they clearly have a, a dynamic which is was similar to tennis, where one's knocking it back, the other one's knocking it back, and then they they complement each other yeah um ryan assumes the role of the understudy yet he is still funny he doesn't kind of completely kind of disappear in the mm. in the scenes with with samuel jackson but samuel has a presence with everyone like personally in the viewing i heard more laughs for for sam's yeah. because he he was saying things which which came so natural and obviously, clearly hearing the way he talks outside of the film, you're just like, that's the way he is. He probably, probably on the set of making the film, there were probably a lot of laughs as well. Because yeah. naturally, he just seems that kind of, that kind of person as well. Um, but the film, um, it seemed like an independent film in terms of the, 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 the promo behind it. I didn't hear too much too much too much considering who's in it you've got Salma Hayek um, Ryan Reynolds Samuel Jackson and Gary Oldman 
Oh wow! Exactly. So I'm just like, there's some heavy hitters in here. A lot of superhero yeah. guys in there. A lot of <laughs> a lot of superhero film yeah. characters in there. Yeah. Um. So in regards to that, I thought to myself, hmm, I didn't really hear too much about this. Um. But in terms of its uh, its delivery, yeah, the the stunts and the jokes and everything were um were really 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 entertaining. It doesn't take itself too seriously, which is good as well. It is one of those films where you can go out and you're not having to f- like really, really kind of concentrate or poke holes in it. And, oh, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Because mm-hmm. I don't think the film stresses to make itself that much of a serious film. It's not trying to put itself in the category of, I don't know, what is a serious action film these days? <laughs> Some of the stunts look a bit far-fetched. But, I mean, I don't know. The Mission Impossible franchise, you would say that's a serious action yeah. film. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't try to put itself in that. There are people falling from literally like 10 stories, landing on their back and rolling off and then getting in the car and then getting shot up and having no bullet holes in them whatsoever. It, it is one of those kind of films. Mm. So you have to take it for what it is. It literally falls into that category of the 80s Arnold Schwarzenegger films, The Commandos. I loved it, where they got stronger and stronger. The more bullet holes that they got rifled with. Where yeah. where, where literally... Yeah, um, the more flesh wounds they had, the stronger they got. Yeah, like Arnold Schwarzenegger would walk into a, a, a mansion full of bodyguards and, and come out with just a bit of sweat. Yeah, a bit of sweat. Or, sweat patches. Or Bruce Willis would start a film walking on glass. <laughs> <laughs> so literally uh, yeah. it's, it's one of those films what I'd give the film out of five um, say three and a half out of five really yeah okay fair enough where, where do you think it could have improved on then I think if it made itself into a more serious film um, in terms of maybe stripping back on the jokes a little bit more which is obviously very hard to do with those types of characters I don't think I've seen a Ryan Reynolds film where he hasn't actually tapped into his humour. Yeah, he's been doing it since the Blade days. I yeah. mean, there are there are chick flicks out there with yeah. him in it, but yeah, nah. And I think that's <laughs> I ain't gonna watch him anyway. Yeah, and that's I think that's that's a fair point. Blade is probably the serious mm. I have seen him in a kind of action mm. type film. Yeah, um, which is why Deadpool was perfect for him. Yeah, I feel like he was playing Deadpool in Blade. Yeah, I feel like that was Deadpool. Yeah, from then I was like, yeah, that's. He's got a kind of Deadpool essence. I think he used Katana's as well, that character in the film. I'm not yeah, sure. yeah. And then he actually played Deadpool, didn't he? Yeah. Like the wrong, the weird version that yeah. Marvel cooked up yeah. the first time around and then played him again. But yeah, all right, cool. So there's another film that you said, or a bit of TV, Netflix. Yeah. So Netflix, um, this one is for all the, the retro heads out there, Nintendo lovers. Let me log into my Netflix. They have ported over... Ported. <laughs> ported, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, go ahead. They have ported over into the, the visual world um, a classic. A classic. If you're uh, an owner, if you're lucky to have to, enough to have owned a NES, Nintendo Entertainment System, back in the day in the 80s, or a Super Nintendo, rather, you would know about the franchise Castlevania. Mm. They have put that onto Netflix, a series, it's a very short series, but visually looks incredible. And the reason why I like it as well, it really kind of taps into that level of anime, which isn't silly or cultish in a sense of like overly soft graphics and like little cute creatures. This is real 18 stuff, man. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So Castlevania tells the story of um, Dracula literally right. and dracula has a partner his wife who tries to see the good in humans unfortunately she is um the humans don't see the good in her they mistake ah. her um sorcery as it were which is literally just modern day medicine it's just modern day yeah. instagram filters is what she uses <laughs> <laughs> so literally her um venture into medicine to help others it kind of backfired on her and the townsfolk of the where the where the series is situated they they turn on her don't want to give too much away from her but it gets very very hot for her as you can imagine okay. w- uh, what normally befalls people who um uh, delve in witchcraft right and that makes dracula very angry so i'm gonna presume this is um manga style 
of cartoon, right? Yeah. yeah I mean, you can, presu- you can presume that, but yeah. it didn't have to be. Okay. Obviously, um, it could have gone any which way. All right. But they have, um, luckily, I've gone down that whole manga, serious anime route in terms of the, the, the graphic design and the, the artwork. Mm-hmm. So you're really getting a serious depiction of the characters okay and but so it's so just to confirm because in case you're not like a super manga fan mm-hmm. it's like it's manga cartoon stuff mm-hmm. but it's adult content yeah this is not like it's serious right yeah all right okay, i'm in well just to clarify if i and i could be corrected manga was a company which um took adult paperback cartoons and made them into animation movie really? animation yeah so they were a company okay. so manga wasn't actually a genre manga was a company wow is yeah. it like when you you said this the other day off the show when we went we were having food on our way back from that trip and you said people call uf people think ufc is a fighting style now yeah they like when people say well, what kind of fighting style do you do, yeah. do you do ufc yeah people are like oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, that makes yeah. Sense it's exactly that. like that so people think ufc is like wing chun like taekwondo like karate wow yeah but it's not wow that's crazy, man. MMA is the the variant of the fighting style. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So what are your so what are your thoughts on it then? So where where do you where do you place this then if you're gonna hit it with a little film like score? My thoughts on this is that this is amazing. I mean, I'm a big fan of of anime and, and, and manga, kind of that that style of animation that came about in the the mid to late nineties. Um My only gripe is that it's a really, really short series. It's literally like they've taken a feature length film and just cut it into four pieces oh man yeah which I guess for the complexities of the artwork I can kind of um, be forgiving yeah but yeah I just want to see more literally as close to five as you can get but not a five for me okay. it's based on how short it is right. but the storyline is very kind of like it draws you in and can you we know, get a season two do you think yeah I think it's gonna, well, it's a Netflix original so I can see them probably committing to, um, I can have a couple of series. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It ties you in just like um, Attack of the Titans has, has caught you recently. Yeah. So Attack on Titans. Rather. Attack on Titan. Yeah. So um, I have no words <laughs> for my, the way I felt when I first watched, when I watched the first episode. I have never watched something that's so trippy and has so much unexplained. Mm-hmm. But it does hook me in because yeah. there's so many questions I have yeah. about it. Yeah. From just from the demeanor of yeah. these giant n- naked crotchless weird creatures that are running around just from their demeanor and like the that the are weird constantly smiling, smiling. Yeah. smiles and they f- some have smiles, some have like grimaces. Yeah. The way they behave. Yeah their origins yeah. i've just got to a point in the story where uh there's a very big strategic move just the way which they explain the strategies mm. of of their armies and mm. the way they work and the hierarchies it's i feel like i don't know correct me if i'm wrong tell me if i'm getting too excited but i feel like this is kind of has got a game of thrones complexity to it in certain ways and the type the way that you look at the the military how it breaks down like that sort of stuff do you know what no disrespect to game of thrones this story is a better yeah of course is a much better than game of thrones and i yeah. feel like that's sometimes the problem when you're you're dealing with with massive um cult followings and franchises some some of them they they get blown out of proportion mm. kind of thing this this storyline if it was had the 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 backing of the hbo and the platforms and it would do so well because what it is is outside of the fact that it is an animation the way the storyline is explained you have to take it serious mm. because of the, the the nature of way of the way they explain um the motivations of these titans the motivation to stop these titans the like you said the, the strategic moves and all they could have just done a simple episode after episode after episode of these things just eating these people but the backstory and explaining mm. it and the, and the character arcs and the development is so intense that you're thinking to yourself, you rarely see this in animation to this, like why? So they're assuming that the viewer that watches this kind of stuff has the intellectual ability to, to take on this kind of level of, of narrative, mm. not very kind of watered down, basic episodical stuff. Yeah. 
it's very deep. Yeah. It's very, very deep. So yeah, I'm, I'm one, I think I'm almost at the end of the first season. Have yeah. I got another season to go? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've got another season. And yeah, I just, I was very impressed. I'm a bit weirded out still. Sometimes mm. I, I, I pause it and I look at one of these Titans and I'm like, Nah, it's the abnormals. Yeah, the way they run really yeah. creeps me out. Yeah, like they, 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 it almost looks like silly. Yeah, some of the, some of the behavior of these titans is silly, but yeah. at the same time, they've got like a, a arm hanging out of their mouth because yeah. they're just yeah. getting it off. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. <sighs> Attack on Titans, but yeah, Castlevania. You like it? You're a fan of it. Um, right. Let's tuck into a few bits that have been going on in the world. Did you know, Funk, that text, emails, and voicemails? I presume you send all of those, right? Yeah. Um, did you ever see them as sort of a legally binding thing or would you call them trivial those sorts of messages like hey how's it going hey whatever yeah I didn't, like give, that, yeah, I didn't give that much thought into it really so now text emails and voicemails could soon be considered as valid wills by the courts after a radical overhaul of inheritance laws if approved by a, ju- if approved by a judge so basically what that means is if you have not left a will a family can apply to have their intentions that were expressed in a message like you know what funk you really need this tv that i've got (laughs) if i say something like that that can be you can when i die you can be like marcus said i can have his tv yeah bro great idea yeah i think in some ways because yeah yeah, okay we communicate a lot with it but don't don't you find that there's a lot of things that you say in messages that could be misconstrued as 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 actual serious conversation that you might say in jest. Yeah, I mean, I mean, aside from that, you've got the the huge problem which is which has put many, 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 many a relationship on the ropes, and that's the problem of auto autocorrect. So let's say you're you're sending your will over to your your nearest and dearest offspring, and autocorrect puts a few more zeros on the end. <laughs> So yeah, oh, so you, so you're saying literally, you just autocorrect t- something turns from ten thousand to a hundred thousand. Yeah, wow. Before you know it, you've kicked the bucket, and your 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 kids are having um WWF uh battles because they feel that they're entitled to money that you haven't even got. And what about like those casual conversations? Like you might have a mate who's really well off, and you go, "Oh, you're rich. Give me all of your cash when you die." I say, "Yeah, of course. You can have it all, mate. Have the boat, have the car. You know what? Have the missus's half as well. You ain't having, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can have it all." And then you actually do die, and then someone walks up to court and says, "Well, he actually, said, <laughs> he actually said uh, that that could, that, that could happen, bro. It could. There has to be some clause in this whereby when you put LOL at the end of the will." It kind of nullifies everything that you said before that. Legally. Yeah. yeah. Kanye West tweeted that once, said that you can say say anything you want to someone in a message as long as you put LOL at the end and it's cool. Crazy. Well, apparently 40% of people die without making a will. So there's 40% of people whose messages could be misconstrued. Have you thought about writing a will yet? This is a bit, a bit grim. Have you thought about it yet? I'm not going to ask you for what cut I get or breakdown, yeah. but have you thought about this yet? I have, I have the other day. But I thought to myself, what are they, they going to do with my records? Yeah. Is that one of your most prized possessions? That's one of my most prized possessions, you know? Yeah. Like, just, I, just the charm, the memories that they hold. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be buried with my Nintendo Switch. <laughs> <laughs> so they're getting, just so I can get in a few more games of Zelda, man, in the afterlife. Get me? I'll probably do something fucked up, like, like get buried with the remote control so they can't find it ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes that's great yes get buried with my gps on and uh <laughs> oh man so yeah that's it um so this opens the door to people that haven't left the will so be careful out there you know maybe that 40 percent didn't want a will yeah yeah or or you know what this actually can be done this actually can have quite a good effect you could be in a situation where you're unwind you're like you know what let me pick up my phone and just record a will mm. let me write a will on my phone mm. and text it to somebody so there you go on voice notes yeah yeah there you go there you go but you will have a lot of people that are taking their partner's phones and writing messages <laughs> with their dying hand <laughs> and sending it to themselves oh goodness yeah trust me these things happen um also funk this is a true story A very true story. I'm going to play a clip from a actual news report to explain what happened in this story. 
We have a once in a lifetime situation that you'll probably never see or hear about again. There's a gentleman who works for a contracting company because this, this bank has been shut down and I guess they're going to remodel it and, uh, and somebody's going to put another bank in there. Well, this gentleman was an employee of the contracting company that was supposed to fix some of the equipment inside the ATM room. So he leaves his phone in his truck, he's installing a new lock on the door, and he gets locked inside the building, inside the little area where the ATM machine is. He can't get out, he can't call anybody because his phone is in his truck. So people are coming by using the ATM machine because it's still operational. And he's slipping notes through the ATM, through the receipt, where you would get your receipt, saying, please help, I'm stuck in the machine. And people are thinking it's a joke, but somebody took it serious and called us. We come out here, and sure enough, we can hear a little voice coming from the machine. So we're all thinking this is a joke. It's got to be a joke. But it was true. There was an employee that was there, and uh, when he was installing the, the lock, it's an, uh, a magnetic electronic lock, and it, it wasn't working correctly, and he couldn't get out. So the officers that got here are actually yelling to him through the ATM machine as if a little guy was stuck inside the machine. So we got a hold of him. He gave us a phone number to call his supervisor. His supervisor came through here. We actually had to kick the door in to get him out. So everybody's okay, but you'll never see this again in your life that somebody's stuck in the ATM machine. It was just crazy. <laughs> wow. Absolutely speechless. So imagine... You went over to your local cash point, yeah. put your card in, yeah. dialed a number in, dialed your yeah. little, you know, pin number in, got out some cash out, and then got a spare note saying, please help me, I'm stuck in here. Phone my boss on this number. What would you do in that situation? Do you know what, yeah? He's lucky he wasn't stuck in the, the ATM, what would you call over here, the cash machine? Cash point. Cash points that give you a, a £1.50 charge. Because yeah. it would have taken him a lot longer yeah. to get that. <laughs> no yeah. one would have used it. Yeah, uh, yeah no, one, no, no, no one would no have used, used it. it. Yeah, yeah. what, £1.50? Because oh, I, right. I just swerved them once. Yeah. I was just like, where's the nearest free cash machine? Have you? Because I think we've wisened up to that. Because think of that. If you add up all of the 150s that you'd spend in your yeah. life going to yeah. those cash points, that's loads of cash. Yeah. Crazy. So, so this so, poor fellow's trapped in there. So a gentleman was working on a, tra on a cash point, went behind... Uh, went into a special room behind it and got locked in a room with a cash point and was screaming help. There are accounts of people saying that they heard, help me, I'm in here, I'm stuck in the machine. <laughs> uh, Do you know what springs to mind? What? More money, more okay. problems. <laughs> uh, uh. Surrounded by all that cash. I'd say like, write out your your story but write out in one one word per note so every time you write i and he writes that on a 20 pound note yeah um 20 pound note <laughs> <laughs> by the time you finish your story with that like, see ya see ya <laughs> but yeah what well, i mean what would you do in that situation funk i well, mean if I, I was, if I was trapped for if i was the the customer yeah Wait, which one if, if I you was, were trapped no was, what would you do in both situations if you were trapped what would you do if i was trapped i would um I see how long I could last. I'd write a different note. If you want your twenty pounds, call this number. <laughs> Do the right thing. No, I'd write. If you want me to keep all the money from your account, let me out. Because <laughs> they wouldn't know. Yeah. Uh, and what would you do if you were on the other side of it? Help me! Help! I'm in here. I'm stuck. I'd giggle my ass off. I mean, that's a great trick. Yeah. Well done, HSBC. <laughs> that's hilarious. Hey, guys, come and listen to this. No, serious. Yeah, sure you are. Look, they've got a little voice in the machine. It's funny, man. Oh. I feel like a doctor's the next day because I say, doctor, like, you know the drugs you gave me for the old um, cough? I think having some side effects, doc. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm hearing voices at the cash machine. <laughs> Not anywhere else, just the cash machine. Yeah, just the cash machine. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Right. Onto something else, Funk. I got a picture which we're going to have up at howtokillanhour.com. Do you want to see the picture or do you want to hear the story? Tell me the story. So there was a man who is a 20-year-old man called Zach Mitchell. Mm -hmm. And working with animals, 
he works with bulls, cows, is very, very dangerous because they're big animals. And sometimes cows, not even just the bulls, which, you know, they're, they're kind of the testosterone fueled, kind of slightly more aggressive of, of, of the breed. They're quite hard to handle, but also regular cows, like a regular, nice, mellow cow. If they move in a direction and, and, and move into you, they're not going to bounce off you. You're going to bounce off them. They'll turn you to milkshake. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so Zach M Mitchell was, had his hand kicked by a bull into a fence. So a bull kicked his hand into a fence and basically... That bull's got some good accuracy. Oh, I'm telling you. He kicked his hand. Yeah. How big is a bull's foot? Um, they've got quite big hoofs. Is it? Is yeah. it, is it what, what are we talking about? Talking about Main with their accuracy. UK size 8? UK I size 9? UK size... UK size, but it's round though. It's a different shape, though, isn't it? <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be like it'll be like it'll be like when a kid puts on your shoes and walks around. That's what it look like. You know, like when your kids put on your trainers and walk around. Do you know what I mean? Your girlfriend might do it too. Oh, look how big your feet are. You know what I mean? That's what it'll be like. So, <laughs> so this ball with its size six foot or whatever, or four foot with Air Max on. <laughs> Kicked his hand to a fence. But what happened? Yeah. Is it ripped his thumb off? <laughs> so the bull's got sharp shoes on there. <laughs> Stilettos. <laughs> Had its big gals on. It's, it's Jimmy Choo's, yeah? Um, and they placed his thumb in a cooler of ice to preserve it. Yeah. That's what you should do. In fact, if you ever lose a limb, mm -hmm. not a limb, like a, uh, what do you call it? A, a digit. Yeah. Don't put it on ice by itself. Wrap it in in something like a tea towel and then put it on the ice because yeah. you don't want the the, the the ice by itself to to burn it. Yeah. Give it ice burn, mess yeah. it all up and kill the cells. But they put it on a, in a cooler full of ice to preserve it, but the surgeons were unable to save it. So they came up with a solution to give him a thumb. So you know like when you're losing your hair, yeah? Mm -hmm. We're quite lucky. Our hairlines are strong. When they... There was a type of hair replacement therapy where they use hair from different parts of your body, mm. apparently. Mm. Wouldn't know. What do you think they use to replace his thumb? Jeez. Go on. Zach Mitchell's thumb. Well, here's what Dr. Sean Nicklin said, because uh, Mr. Zach Mitchell was quite reluctant about this. He goes, it's a bit of a crazy idea that yeah. the patients don't want to be get injured in another part of their body in order to um, save the thumb. Uh, if you don't have something to pinch against, it's all good having four fingers, but if you don't have a thumb and something to pinch, your hand loses a large amount of its function, which is true, like mm. chopsticks, nah, you know, spoon, nah. It's not easy to hold things without yeah. a thumb. Hitchhiking, nah. Exactly. A lot of people <laughs> think balance and walking is going to be significantly affected after after the procedure, which, which it generally isn't. That's a little clue for you. And... Basically, they transplanted his big toe onto his thumb, where his thumb was. <laughs> I'm really impressed. I'm just shaking my head. And this is even more impressive. Before we move on, Sydney Eye Hospital completed the procedure, and Eye Hospital did the toe. So there you go. So they took I think those doctors need an eye check because <laughs> why? Why would you use because the toe? you can't? Because it's part of your body. And do you want to see the toe? The, the, the what would you call it? A thumbnail? A toe? Thumbnail? A toe or a, a tum? What do you call it now? It's, it's toe thumb. Oh my word! He does need a manicure. Pedi? Ma oh, what does he get? What does he charge? What do they charge him for <laughs> if he goes in for a manicure? <laughs> but yeah, he's got a thumb, toe thumb. I want to know if he punches someone. Is that a kick or is that? <laughs> <laughs> Could he be a boxer? Or would that be cheating? Or he could only do kickboxing. He could actually be a kickboxer. <laughs> by definition. He's got MMA in one hand. He could <laughs> <laughs> He's got a UFC hand. His hand is UFC. He's got the UFC hand. Oh my goodness. But I mean, I'm just I'm, I'm just this is what I'm happy with. Surgery nowadays means that you can replace your t I'm just if I ever lose my thumb, I'm gonna have my toe. Phone nail. Toenail, yeah, wow. But yeah, obviously he's going to be walking around now without a toenail. He's worried about balance and stuff. It's going to take mm. him like a year to recover. If you want to see the picture of the toenail, check it out at howtokillanhour.com. Very, very Doctor Frankensteinish. I think yeah, it looked like it was fresh out of surgery. That needs to needs to tidy up. 
But yeah, a whole year of rehab he needs to re- before he can return to work. And he's probably going to have the best and biggest thumbs up out of all of his mates now. I mean, he's good and he gives you the thumbs up. You know he's good. Because <laughs> that's going to be one heck of a tum. That's like the thumbs and the, 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 the whole... Um the sporting events, the foam, the foam yeah, hands. He won't need it, you know, like when there's music playing. Doom, doom, tsh, doom, doom, tsh. We were, we were rocky. You won't need to do that, man. Wow, crazy. Uh, I was going to say, does he wear gloves or socks? <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> but yeah, man, no, shout out to you, Zach, man. I'm glad to hear that you managed to save your hand. Just so you know, today's show episode of How to Kill an Hour is brought to you in collaboration with Microsoft and their new Surface Pro. The podcast you are listening to right now was in fact edited and uploaded via our top of the range Intel i7 Surface Pro, which is made for people who want to take their creativity on the go. It packs all of the punch of a high spec laptop, but check this. It's only 8.5 millimeters thick, ladies, and weighs less than a kilogram, probably lighter than the bag you put it in, or one-tenth the size of my KFC order, I'd say. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. So it's lightweight. Um, if you want to find out more about the Microsoft Surface Pro, you can click the link in our show description and you can check it out there. We've kind of spoken around the areas of like what the Microsoft Surface Pro does. But like I said, Microsoft done all this research to find out what creative people do. Yeah. <laughs> and I got to have a look at some of this research okay. that they collated. And, you know... I got lots of little, little 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 bits of data that are quite interesting, yeah. It's like, but I wanted to talk about being creative on the go f- as well as that funk. So a, cr- a creative mobile professional, or as we like to call CMP, is what we are, right? Mm-hmm. How important to you is it that we are like creative on the go? Like how important is that to you nowadays? It's imperative. Yeah. Because... <clears throat> When I think about it, this is very rarely that I'm stationary for long periods of time, unless I'm obviously in a studio session. I'm actually building. Yeah. Um, aside from that, you're having meetings, you're having kind of, you're having to take correspondence, you're having to send correspondence. So you could be on the tube, you could be outside, you yeah. could be literally just leaving your house, you could be mm. in your car, you can, you're always on the move yeah. and I think that's just the nature in general that's the nature of London life outside of the creative mobile professional I think a lot of Londoners like are moving very very quickly mm. that's why you look miserable in the morning on the tube <laughs> <laughs> too right man too right yeah for me I'm the same and I just feel like I'm always doing something like whether it's making a plan sending an email doing a note reviewing listening to some audio or something mm-hmm. like that I'm always working on the go mm-hmm. um so people are uh, the most creative at different times of the day and in different places, but where are you most creative, Funk? In the shower. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Ah, ah, <laughs> Not even on the, on, the, on the cheesy tip of, of singing in the shower. I have a lot of brainstorms in the shower. As soon as I get to the armpits, Yeah. That's where the new ideas begin to take fruition. Really? Is yeah. that when you're scrubbing the armpit section? Yeah. That's where the new ideas come into yeah. fruition. Yeah. So that's when you're like, when you're going, there, that's you're the like, Eureka moment. Okay. The left armpit. The left armpit yeah. only. Okay, cool. Interesting. Left armpit. Me's got to be when I'm like, scratch it, when I'm like shampooing. Is it weird that I use shampoo? Because yeah. I've got short hair. Yeah. A lot of people say that to me. What's wrong with using shampoo? Because I've got short hair. <laughs> it's hair nonetheless. And I use conditioner. Yeah, yeah. what's wrong with that? That's going too far. Why? <laughs> Why? That's when I'm creative because I'm massaging my muscles. Yeah, I'm massaging the skin around my head. I'm massaging my brain. That's when I'm creative. <laughs> Putting that conditioner in. What? What is wrong with having something that keeps my hair soft and fluffy? <laughs> <laughs> is that really weird? Is that too far? That is odd. Really? So what should I use then? A bar of soap, shower gel. Just use water. Just what? <laughs> Wait, is it allowed to be hot? What, is <laughs> Just that cold you, water. Is that what you tell the ladies? I can't see you tonight. I'm washing my hair. Yes. It's, <laughs> and, and blow dry. No, I don't blow dry. That's too far. <laughs> so, Fung, I found some data about creativeness that Microsoft have. So I'm going to throw you some quick fire questions and we're going to roll off the data on the back of it. Who do you think is more creative, men or women? Men. Why? Because you are one. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, it's my chauvinism. 
Men are found to be 15% more likely to, on average to feel creative earlier in the day between 5 and 9 a.m. Meanwhile, women surveyed were 19% more likely to feel creative in the evening between 5 and 11 p.m. So who's more creative out of us then? Men or women? Men, well, a smaller percentage of men are more creative in the morning and a slightly larger percentage of women are more creative in the evening. Okay, so depending on the time of the day. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, who's more creative, old or young? <sighs> the kids. I reckon it's the kids, but the, the facts say those aged between 18 to 34 years old were 31% more likely, to, 31 more likely to, on average to feel creative in the evening between 5 and 11 p.m. That's when the young people are feeling creative. Mm -hmm. However, those aged 55 are 31% more likely to feel creative first thing before 9 a.m. So the older you get, the more creative you are. Yeah, that makes sense because in the morning, the kids create a lot of mess in the yeah, morning. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, the late night, late night messiness. As a creative person, Funk, what would you say is your biggest bit of advice for those that want to stay creative out there? Go to Amsterdam. <laughs> um, <laughs> <sighs> yeah. um, how to stay creative? That's a good question. Because creativeness is, is so subject. I'm not, I don't want to go down this profound route. Um, creativeness is, you have to be one with the universe. Yeah. I think we need some music when this is. <laughs> what, some worldly music? Yeah, some worldly yeah, music. I'll do some. Some panpipes. Um, I don't know. I think being creative is linked to fearlessness as well yeah just <clears throat> being forthcoming with your ideas seeing them through as well because mm. you can't be creative if the ideas just stay in your, your noggin your head mm. and they literally don't touch the pad of the paper kind of thing so you actively need to be not only thinking the ideas but developing them mm. to be in my in my um estimations seen as a creative yeah so once you're doing that once twice three times i feel like it becomes habitual yeah then you become a creative yeah yeah <sighs> what an answer <sighs> the crowd go wild i f you know f for me i don't know um it's kind of like for me it's become with my personally for me with age it's become time mm-hmm creativeness for me takes time like i used to rush my creative sometimes and i could do it but now i feel like even with how to kill an hour like naming this show i tried to rush it and i came up with some terrible names go on bro. go on this even oh, i got the list somewhere i think i deleted the list uh do you oh really yeah the bronzy chit chat show <sighs> probably probably uh, bronzy speaks to you show uh, it was Hey, I Marcus, talk to me. Show. All right, I found it. I found it. Um, <laughs> wow. Tech sometime out. Show. The water cooler podcast. Oh, gosh. The fill in. Fill in. <laughs> Roll out. Seriously, though. Work in progress. Common knowledge. Uncommon sense. <laughs> the easy problem. Say my name. Say my name. Middle bits. Join the club. Back and forth. That's not bad though. Back and forth, is it? Yeah. The worst one though. Mind sprinkles. Mind sprinkles. And I really liked it. I was like, I was like, yo, what do you, what do you think, guys? Mind sprinkles. You know, I've had every version of people going. Yeah. Just a chat. Technical difficulty. I don't know. That was it. <laughs> Mind sprinkles sounds like if the, if the, if there were such a thing as podcasts in yeah. the seventies. Yeah, that, yeah, that but, sounds very psychedelic. Hey, but how to kill an hour is what it was, and hey it went man, from there. I yeah. heard you've been yeah. developing that new show called Mind Sprinkles. Exactly, man. But yeah, anyway, so yeah, that's how I like to stay creative, and um, yeah, plenty more. In fact, um, something inspired me to be creative. I actually got invited over to a uh, event by Microsoft. And I uh, got to see Sully Brakes and uh, a gentleman called David William Herm, who wrote an app called Staff Pad. Now, Sully Brakes is a spoken word poet. 
David William Herm is a composer, but he writes scores for films. Mm -hmm. And he wrote this app called Staff Pad, which works with the Surface Pro, where you draw notes by hand onto what is music sheets on the on your tablet and it actually turns them into real notes and you can write compositions on it which are re is really helpful you mm, can mm -hmm. scribble, scribble them down um and they worked together to create something called an ode to the commute and silly Bro silly breaks is like a wicked spoken word pro it he's written a piece of spoken word that was so impressive that will smith saw it and invited him to lunch really yeah yeah it's, it's he's and his words are really powerful so him and david Herm got together david created a composition out of the sounds of london mm -hmm. and so he rapped over it at this event and i was just like wow like i'd love to it kind of got my kind of creative juices flowing so what i so, and we're going to put a link to that in the show description as well but what i did in in the next episode actually um is i actually recorded some sounds of london like on a day out so you can kind of come for a day out with me in london like an impromptu day out with some sounds which mm -hmm. you can check out in the next mm -hmm. episode but yeah so that was just me getting creative and that just came to me because i had a bit of time on my hands i was thinking let me what can i make creative that's audio mm. and i thought i'd knock that out and you know I me mean? i like a little bit of sound recording as mm -hmm. well but yeah that was it um also funny you got a track out man a track out coming out the yeah. 21st yeah um of july 2017 yep club culture yeah feel the baseline featuring keys and it's a uh, it's an ode to um the ladies the ladies getting ready mm -hmm. kind of thing and what they see from their perspective in the club mm -hmm. told from the perspective of a female mc called keys mm -hmm. she's doing really really big things she just recently um finished um uh, a project with levi's and skepta at the vna mm -hmm. um but yeah this track is a combination of house meets grime mm. attitudes and mm. whatnot and it's kind of like yeah uh a, a collision of us and uk um styles for the club so that's coming out on my label houseology so go get that it's mm. available on your itunes your spotify your beat port your track source the yeah. lot there you go thank you very much thank funk thank frank. Frank. frank and uh it's so funny in brussels funk said his name was funk to someone they went ah funk <laughs> <laughs> and they thought you were <laughs> they thought you were because the English guy. Yeah. He thought, he's like, "Hi, my name's Funk." He goes, "Ah, Funk." Like, like, no, Dutch. no, it's actually Funk. He goes, "Oh, Funk." Oh, all right, mate. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Funny. Um. Anyway, yeah. Finally, thank you to Microsoft who sponsored this episode of How to Kill an Hour. Uh, this episode of How to Kill an Hour is brought to you in collaboration with them and their new Surface Pro. The podcast you were listening to now, in fact, was edited and uploaded via this top of the lion Intel i7 Surface Pro, which is in my hands right now, and it's made for people who want to take their creativity on the go. The new Pro, this has 50% more battery life and performance than previous models, meaning you and your creativity can travel much further. There's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. Bless. I've been Marcus Bronzy. I've been Funk Butcher. <laughs> <laughs>